Hey, how you doing? My name is David Duford, owner and operator of Buy Life Insurance for Burial.com, and I want to give you a warm welcome for joining me on today's special recording about the truth about final expense whole life insurance. And in today's video, I am going to go into explicit and deep detail about everything related to final expense whole life insurance. The end goal of this particular training is to help you understand exactly how final expense whole life insurance works from the standpoint of a consumer potentially interested in purchasing it and to also give you the knowledge and power to make sure that you're buying the best choice that is available to you and you know what methods in order to find out where and, and where to get the best particular kind of program available and that you can qualify for. So let's go ahead and get started. So uh, first to start is just a bit of an overview of what to, to, to expect today. So first I'm going to tell you a little bit more about myself and what I do. Then we're going to go into a more of a uh, formal definition as at least to how I define final expense whole life insurance because I know you're probably inundated by all sorts of advertisements and uh, junk mail about all things life insurance. And you may be a little confused. So I'll spend some time defining that. Then we're going to go into what would be the reasons to begin with to buy final expense whole life insurance because it's not right for everyone. And you need to know explicitly what those reasons would be and, and discover for yourself if a final expense whole life insurance product is really right for you. And then we're going to go into some of the different options to consider as far as what's available for whole life final expense coverage. Then we're going to go into coverage types available. Then answer the question you might be asking, can I qualify? I have health problems or, or have had health problems. What are my options? I'm going to go into detail there to hopefully help uh, clarify what you are able uh, to qualify for. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Then we'll hit on some final points to consider when buying a final expense whole life insurance plan and then summarize and wrap the thing up. So let's first start off with uh, an introduction about myself. Who am I and why should you listen to me? Well, First of all, as I said, my name is David Duford and I am the owner of BuyLifeInsuranceForBurial.com. I have been a licensed, and still am by the way, a licensed life insurance agent since 2011. So I've been uh, in the life insurance, specifically the final expense business uh, since that time and have helped over 1,500 families in a variety of states uh, with their final expense and life insurance needs. So I have had tons of experience uh, dealing and answering questions from families about final expense whole life insurance, just like you're inquiring. I'm also uh, a, a publisher, or at least I publish a book, uh, a best-selling book, more towards the uh, idea of training agents to become good and effective final expense uh, life insurance agents. Uh, the book, if you're interested, you can find it on Amazon. It's called The Official Guide to Selling Final Expense Insurance. Um, uh, yeah, so that's how that works. And then on words here, we're a life insurance agency owner as well. Uh, not only do I go out and uh, help people like yourself with final expense whole life insurance, I actually recruit agents nationally. Uh, I've had agents in Maine, I've had agents in Hawaii, and everywhere in between. And what I do is I go out and help these people uh, become effective agents and mentor and train them so they can help people like you wherever they live. And I've helped over 400 agents to do just that in my uh, agency program. I'm also married uh, with our uh, fourth child on the way. Been married since 2006, <laughs> 2008. Don't tell my wife I said 2006, she'll kill me. So almost 10 years now at the recording of this video. And four kids on the way, feel pretty good about that. All right, so enough about me. So let's answer a question you might be asking yourself. What exactly? is final expense whole life insurance anyway. So let me kind of give you a definition about how I generally speaking uh, define final expense whole life insurance. So first of all, uh, the idea behind final expenses um, should be defined because there's a particular reason people buy whole life final expense coverage. So first of all, the idea and reason people buy final expense whole life insurance includes the cover costs related to funerals, burials and cremation type of expenses. So, um, for example, uh, if you're concerned about covering for a burial, you're thinking about the casket, you, the, the, the plot, the, um, the urn if you're going to be cremated, the service, the delivery fees, the flowers, and everything else in between, and you're not sure you have the kind of uh, financial capacity to pay for it, 
then a final expense whole life insurance is something that's worth considering. Uh, many people, hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people, have a plan, as I'm describing, to cover these expenses because they're not sure, being on a fixed income after all, if they've got the capacity to pay for this stuff out of pocket. It is a big driver of why people buy. So it's a very common reason people purchase a final expense whole life insurance plan. Now, just as much as you would purchase a final expense whole life plan for final expenses, you can easily purchase it for non-final expense related costs. So if you have, let's say, a car loan, you want to give this car to your, your granddaughter, or you want to keep it in the family, leave it to your spouse, but not have them pay for this expense, a final expense plan is perfect for that because if you die before the payments are paid and the thing is paid off well you got this plan to take care of those kind of non-funeral related expenses and, and and what kind of expenses they can be let your imagine run wild anything you don't want somebody else to pay for when you pass away a policy like a final expense whole life plan is perfect to cover those expenses so also income replacement this is something i see very commonly amongst uh, spouses in their 60s and 70s, younger and older too. But the, the concept is simple. Typically speaking, the male has the higher Social Security income earning, whereas the female doesn't. And in, in most families, the men go first. Of course, we don't know. But if imagine if uh, you, if you're a woman, loses your husband or vice versa. That's going to have a, a big shock economically. And that's why these policies are perfect to help replace some of that income to offset the change and to make life easier for the surviving spouse. And also, lastly, to leave a legacy. Let's say you want to leave money behind to a grandkid to help them get through college, to help get them started. When my grandfather passed away, he left a simple $7,000 plan he picked up when he was in the military back in the 50s uh, to my mom. She needed a new house. It was perfect timing. Uh, couldn't pick a better time. And, you know, that's exactly a great reason to buy a plan is to have that for those, you know, just as a gift, something like that. So generally with these kind of plans, final expense whole life, there are smaller death benefits. And when I say smaller, it can happen, but most people don't buy a million dollar death benefit. They don't even buy a half million dollar death benefit. It can be done, but most of the time what we experience are people who purchase a plan that's going to cover enough for a burial. Let's say roughly $10,000. The 25000 is common. We can even do smaller than that. I've helped people out with $2,000 plans or $3,000 plans because all they want is just a, a, a very simple cremation and nothing else. Uh, usually these plans are what we call simplified issue whole life final expense. All that means is that nobody's going to poke you with a needle or ask you to pee in a cup. Uh, there's no examinations or physicals. You simply complete an application. Sometimes you do a phone interview to verify health conditions over the phone, uh, or you just send that in the application in to get approved. But the great thing is you don't have to do all these things extra to even potentially qualify for. Uh, with these plans, you either qualify or you don't, especially if you do a phone interview, as I like to do with my clients. Uh, we find out immediately, uh, thumbs up or thumbs down. So you don't have to wait around. You get an instant decision, which is what we really want in this business. So moving on, why buy final expense whole life insurance to begin with? So I kind of alluded to this to some extent. So I'm going to kind of expand upon this um, in areas may, may not have gone through already. So top reasons to purchase final expense whole life insurance includes the following. So first of all, is the fear of not having sufficient money to pay for funeral expenses. This probably accounts for 80 to 90% of the reasons why people purchase a final expense plan. To put it in plain English, if you're worried that when you die, your spouse or your kids will have to come out of pocket cash money to pay for your burial, and you're worried that either your spouse or your kids won't have that expense available, or you don't want them to have that have to burden at that expense, then a final expense whole life plan is, is a very good thing to consider. It might be a perfect solution to that concern. Again, this is what most people purchase final expense whole life insurance for. Simply put, they are on a fixed income. They have reached retirement, and they're not rich. <laughs> they may have had a pension or have a pension, but it's not so substantial, assuming that they have any savings at all, to cover for these kind of expenses. Again, out of pocket all of a sudden, because death commonly is not predictable. It's something that happens suddenly. And the time that it takes to accumulate enough money to pay for it just isn't there, unfortunately. 
So if you're in a circumstance where you're worried that you don't have the money or your kids don't have the money, then this is the kind of plan that's perfect to pay for final expenses so nobody else has to come out of pocket, raise money at church, do a car wash or those kind of things. Uh, point B here, the fear of a spouse living off of less, meaning their income has changed because of your death and reducing their existing lifestyle. This is something I see very commonly as well. Uh, just like I mentioned before, if you can picture your loved ones having less money to live on and it uh, dramatically altering their lifestyle, maybe they don't get to get the normal things they're accustomed to. Maybe their income changes so negatively that it forces them to change health insurance. Maybe they can't get the kind of plans that they want or maybe they can't get the medications they want because now they just can't afford to. If that's some kind of concern of yours where it may dramatically affect your survivor's uh, living, then a final expense plan is a perfect solution to replace and supplement lost income. Uh, this happens very commonly. I had a gentleman, uh, 85, who bought $125,000 in an abnormal situation, but it does happen. And he wanted to leave money behind to supplement his income for his wife. And when he passed away, there it was. It made a dramatic difference in his surviving wife's life because it was there. So uh, again, one reason people buy that is for that reason alone. Point C, relieve the financial burden of the what ifs from spouse and family. So this kind of uh, builds on to the last point in the last slide when it comes to, oh, you know, uh, you know non-funeral related final expenses. Look, things happen, right? You may have savings today, but something may happen where the savings will be all gone. Perfect story, I had a gentleman uh, I met down in Alabama uh, who retired from the police force, uh, had a great, has a great pension, had a lot of money saved up. His wife worked as a teacher as well. And uh, unfortunately, his daughter uh, got into the wrong crowd and was addicted to drugs. And if you know anything about dealing with addiction, it is a costly endeavor to deal with. This daughter of his was in her 20s and I think early 30s when he was in his 60s, right at the peak of his retirement from the police force. So he drained all of his savings, first of all, to bail her out of jail. Second of all, he drained even more of his savings to help her go to rehab several times. A lot of people just don't go once, they go back multiple times and it's not cheap. And this, again, dramatically altered his lifestyle. And if you ask the guy when his daughter was born if this was gonna happen, of course he'd say no. He never would have expected it to happen. And you see, that's the reason he has life insurance and final expense whole life insurance specifically because he wanted to have a plan set aside to cover those expenses that may arise and be, um, be a problem. Whereas prior to all this money spent, he never could have seen. So again, people just buy these plans to play it safe. And that's a completely legitimate reason to have them because you've lived long enough you don't know what's going to happen day to day. You really don't. Things happen suddenly, unexpectedly. And money costs uh, and requirements for money uh, usually never go away and they intensify and increase as you get older. So again, another reason to have one of these kinds of plans. Last reason here is mentioned in the prior slide. Uh, good reason to have these is just to financially help out people you love. Leave a legacy behind. Like I mentioned about my mom earlier, she had a new roof put on with the $7,000 uh, policy my grandfather left. Look, I mean, these things help people out. And if you're compassionate and loving and you feel a, a tug on your heart to do this, again, a final expense whole life policy is perfect as a solution to make this work. So let's talk about some funeral expense fun facts. And I put fun in quotes because well, there's no fun in funeral. Well, I guess there is fun in funeral, but not the kind of fun I want. <laughs> so I put the fun in funeral. Let's put it that way. But uh, let's Take a look at some of the, again, the main reason people buy this is to fund their funeral so they don't have to come out of pocket or a kid doesn't have to come out of pocket for it. So let's look at some of these costs because this is really shocking if you haven't actually looked into this because it's going to provide you some real perspective on what the reality is of funeral expenses. So first of all, this is a survey done by the National Funeral Directors Association in 2014. So it's been several years since this has been conducted. So you can pretty much assume, because prices usually don't go down as you get older, they go up, that they're, they're even worse than they are now. So check this out. So for an average funeral, so this is a burial kind of funeral, the average funeral in 2014 cost approximately $8,500. I would say that is a pretty good rough average. 
And, and this basically, in the survey, they broke down all the component costs of a burial and a cremation, we'll get to in a minute, looked at the, the, uh, the uh, basically the transportation costs, the flower costs, the caskets, embalming, um, everything associated with a funeral. And the average cost was approximately $8,500. Now, surprisingly so, I was actually shocked to see this because I've seen cremations less expensive than this, but this is maybe in a part of the country where uh, the overall costs are lower in the southeast where I live. Now, the average cremation nationally costs 6100 Now, what they're doing here is they're accounting for a full funeral service as well as the cremation expense. Um, and, and I think this is a little high. Um, I've seen plenty of cremations in the 3000 range, if not less. And you probably have too. So if you're looking at this kind of like, whoa, this is a little high, you're probably right. Um, I kind of wonder how they did their maths because I've never, I've seen maybe one or two that have been this high, but most have not been. But they're saying that's the average. And, um, you know, there's a lot to a cremation with a full service for sure. A lot of people get cremations, just end up getting a direct cremation, maybe a small service at a, uh, a small service at a church or like my grandfather we had a meeting at the rotary club oh it was a wake at the rotary club not a meeting but you get the idea you know it was free it was low cost grandpa didn't want to spend a bunch of money on the stuff so you know I, I don't think he was spending this much on it but you get the idea um if you go all out and you do the service then you're looking at a par price that's pretty high so here's really the kicker here guys so y'all been around long enough y'all know prices go up as you get older and from 2004 to 2014, so we're talking about the span, span of 10 years, funeral costs rose 28.6%. So I did the math roughly. And literally between 2004 and 2014, you had a $2,000 approximate price increase. More expensive, again, $2,000 more expensive in 2014 than 2004. And then if you look at the prior 10 years, so from 94 to 2004, there was another 25% or so increase from 94 to 2004. So the price increases have just been massive. Uh, it's just like everything else. There's nothing getting cheaper. I keep saying that, but it's true. And um, so, you know, the thing you got to consider here is long term, making sure you've got enough. You know, 8,500 is the average cost today. Was it going to be in 20, 30 years if you're alive then? A lot more. So uh, another reason to have more coverage because many times our savings don't keep up with inflation either. So you got to have some kind of plan. It's good at least to consider a plan to supplement that reality. Okay, so moving on here. What are my options for final expense whole life insurance? So this is really important. Um, I know I've sat with probably 3,000 plus people since 2011, most of which are people on a fixed income. And then they literally swim to the door through all sorts of junk mail. <laughs> and I can't even get through a meeting with many of these people without seeing some advertisement for funeral expense insurance on TV. So it's something I'm sure you've seen time and time again. And if, if you're like most people I see, the more you see something and the more of different companies and flyers and promotions, it ends up being all entirely too confusing. And many reasons why people don't do anything. So let's kind of work on dispelling some of this. So there's a couple of angles we're going to go here. So first of all, like I said, there's lots of different coverage options that can, can be confusing, totally understandable. But what I want to do is cover what is not final expense whole life insurance first. Very important to differentiate between what you actually want to get as final expense whole life insurance and what you want to stay away from. So we'll spend some time doing that. Then we'll define the basics of what is whole life insurance, and then we'll move on from there. So again, Let's start with what is not final expense whole life insurance. So first of all, here's how you quickly determine if the life insurance product you're considering is not final expense whole life insurance. So these are the things you want to look for to purposely stay away from. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So the first thing is looking for coverage that is term life insurance. This is critical, guys. Listen up here. If there's anything you take away from this presentation, it's this. You see that term, how it's capitalized? Here's how I want you to remember what term means. Term is short for terminates. Literally, when you buy a term policy, you're betting you're going to die before the plan expires. Did you catch that? Term plans expire. They terminate. They cancel. 
And many of the stuff you're seeing, many of the carriers you see through the mail and on TV that offer term insurance, and these are big brand name companies, AARP, Globe Life Insurance, they actually terminate in many cases at 80 years old. So you could be buying this today, and if, you're, if you live the average length of most people, which is around 80 years old, you lose your coverage. And on top of that, point two here, rates go up. With many of these plans, there are incremental increases every five years. So it may be affordable at 60, but is it at 65, at 70, and then the huge increase at 75? Many times it's not, and I would say most people end up dropping their coverage because they just simply can't afford it anymore. They, they've paid for it, but their Social Security doesn't go up as high as the price increases go up, so they just end up dropping it. It's a position you don't want to be in. I hope you can understand that. Because the nature of death, because that's really what we're insuring, right? Our policy is final expenses. The thing is, we don't know when final expense is going to be. It could be tomorrow. It could be 30 years from now. And we need to have a plan that's guaranteed to pay under any circumstance. It's very, very critical to have that. Because without that, you have and are taking a risk. You're gambling. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And again, one thing I'll say to try not to sound biased here, again, I believe that whole life final expense insurance is the best option and route to go. The one thing that term insurance is going to have, and, and not all circumstances, but most, is it's cheaper to start if you can qualify for it. But you get what you pay for. You pay less now and a whole lot more later. And again, think of yourself on a fixed income. If you're on a fixed income, you get one check a month. Everything has to fit that check. You have to pinch pennies and you have to watch every single, single thing that you buy. And with life insurance, imagine getting a price increase that doubles. It starts off at 50. Now it's 100. You can be able to afford that because you're going to have other things going up in price. Why take that risk when you don't have to? Which is why I do not like people who want final expense coverage to take out a term policy. It's not that I'm against term. It has a particular place. It just depends on the circumstances, but the vast majority of people who want a guaranteed policy don't need to get a term policy. Also kind of uh, tucked in here is universal life coverage. Okay, You may have seen this. Most of you won't, but I wanted to mention this because it's just some factors to consider. It's not always the case that universal life is bad. It's just that something you should be wary of and do your due diligence before you decide to buy it. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's the best choice. But sometimes it's not. So let me explain. So it's not necessarily permanent whole life insurance. So sometimes universal life plans can be designed to last only to a particular age. Many times they'll last until 80 or 85 or 90. And in, in theory or in spirit, they're really just a term policy. They've got a limit to it. So if you outlive that plan, then you lose your coverage or the price substantially increases along those lines. So you got to ask yourself, do you... You know, okay, you know, not everybody's going to live to 100 if it, if it cancels at 100. And you may feel comfortable, but what if you do? You're still going to have final expense needs. And you just got to seriously consider you're not really getting something that gives you full lifetime guarantee. Now, the other thing is the premiums may not be guaranteed for life either. And again, if there's an agent listening to this, I understand. It depends. You can get universal life programs with guaranteed premiums. And that's what you should go towards if this is appropriate for you. But there's a lot of people that sell these universal life plans, and I won't get into the minutia and bore you to death for those of you watching, but a lot of the times agents will design these plans to where there will be a price increase. And we've seen it out in the field working with people face-to-face -face, where agents have come in and they've offered these plans, these universal life plans, and the client has kept it for decades even. And then they're in their 70s and they get this massive price increase uh, letter. And they can't afford it anymore, and they're livid, understandably. And again, it's because the agent from the outset did things and designed that plan in, in, in a way that was destined to fail. It was going to be a long time before it did, but eventually it did. And so I say all this not to say that universal life is, is not an option under any circumstances. It's just a risky one under certain ones. And you want to make sure you're working with an agent that fully understands universal life plans, how they work and what they're doing for you, and have them explain to you what the guarantees are and making sure it's all there and approved before you go buying one of those plans. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's talk about the basics of whole life insurance um, as far as now we've covered what not to get or what to question. Let's cover what you should absolutely have 
in a whole life final expense program. So first of all, these are the basics. This should be included with every single program you have. Maybe you're looking at something that looks like whole life, maybe call, maybe call it permanent insurance. Um, sometimes it's interchangeable terminology, but you want to make sure you have these particular elements in your plan, again, to ensure you're getting the best overall value. So first of all, you want to make sure you have a guaranteed fixed premium for life. Okay, one of the biggest advantages of a final expense whole life plan done properly is that the premium stays the same. You do not have to worry about price increases. You do not have to worry about getting the dreaded price increase letter five years down the road like you would with term insurance. What you pay today is what you pay when you die. And that's great for someone on a fixed income because there's no uh, surprises. There's no uh, risk about not being able to afford a price increase because it is what it is. You can depend upon it. It's guaranteed. Must have with any final expense whole life plan. Again, no prime premium increases ever. Second point here is guaranteed non-cancelable due to health or age. Now, this is very important. Again, one of the things I teach when I'm helping somebody out with what kind of life insurance or what kind of final expense plan to get is that you have to match the life insurance product with the particular problem the person is having. All life insurance does is it solves problems, okay? And there are different problems for different people. If you're a young man and you're working hard and you're the breadwinner for the family and you suddenly die, well, if your wife is a stay-at-home mom and she has three or four, like my wife, if I pass away and my wife is in a position where now she has to go work, she has to fund all the lifestyle things that we've accumulated, it's really important to provide a plan that covers in that circumstance. Perfect plan for that per particular circumstance is term insurance. It's the cheapest way to get a lot of coverage, and it will cover for a temporary period of time. But as long as you understand that going in and use it as an income replacement plan, if I ended up dying before uh, the plan expires, well, now my wife has all this money that I would have earned if I had still lived and had the time necessary to accumulate it. The other factor, for example, is um, what happens if you buy a mortgage or you have buy a house and now you have a mortgage. You have debt. You need to have a plan that covers in the case that you don't actually live long enough to fulfill and fully pay off that mortgage. That's what we call mortgage insurance. So with death, the factor, that the problem is, is we're all going to die. Okay? We, the other problem with that is we don't know when it's going to be. It could happen at a certain age, it couldn't. And you can say that with any age. And the fact is, is there are guaranteed expenses that will happen. So we don't know when it's going to happen, but we know it's going to happen, and we know we're going to have an expense. So I say all this because we don't want a plan that may go before us. It may cancel before us, right? Think of the logic behind that. Why would I invest a premium into a plan for all these years to take the chance I might outlive it if the purpose of it is for final expenses? This is why your final expense whole life policy should have a guaranteed, non-cancelable because of age or health. And all of them do. But the idea and the concept is simple. You just pay it and you know you have it. That's critical. And that is matching the problem you have of death and not knowing when it's going to happen and having guaranteed expenses with a plan that actually solves for all those problems. Hopefully that makes sense. So, again, as long as you pay, you have coverage. And you also want, lastly, a level death benefit does not, that does not decrease. Most of these plans have that. There are a few weird plans I've seen out there where they have decreasing death benefits when they hit a certain age, but most of these are going to have level death benefits. Again, what you want when it comes down to final expense whole life insurance is what you see is what you get. You want a plan that covers you. You want a plan that doesn't cancel because you're too old now or your health is bad. And you want a plan that's going to be the same price from start to finish. Pretty simple. You don't want anything any more complicated than that because of your circumstance on a fixed income and making sure that you get something that's sustainable. Okay, so now that we've talked about the basics, let's talk about the must-have. So these are things, not necessarily, they're associated with within the policy itself, but other things you should look for in the process of finding that policy. So I'll go ahead and explain what I mean now. So first of all, the first thing you want to get is try to the best of your abilities to get a first day 100% full coverage if you can qualify for it. So I say that because, as I said in the beginning, you're swimming through uh, a, a boatload of junk mail and uh, an onslaught of television ads. The reality is these are big brand names you've probably heard of all your life, but unfortunately, literally, and I'm not 
pulling any strings here, most of them make you wait for two full years before you're fully covered for natural death. Yeah, you may get a brand name company, but who cares if you're not covered and you die from some sort of freak accident? Not a freak accident, but a freak uh, natural cause. For example, you have a stroke. Never had a stroke, but now you have a stroke and you're dead. You have pancreatic cancer. The lifespan on pancreatic cancer is short. And if you die within those two years of any of these plans, you're out of luck. You don't want to get those plans if you can afford to. Okay, and the key to doing that is number two here, is, is work with an independent agent. So, for example, I'm an independent agent. And I have been since I started this business because I felt it was absolutely critical. If I'm supposed to do the best job for you, I need to not marry myself to one company. Okay, so there's a lot of companies out there, or a lot of agents that work for one company. They only offer one product and one choice for you. And in many circumstances, it's just not the best choice for you. You're going to get overcharged. You're going to get inferior coverage. The short of it is you're not going to get the best value that you deserve. Whereas an independent agent works with a multitude of companies. You see, I go out there for each of my clients and figure out which company is going to be the best price, which kind of is in combination with the best value of coverage with the goal of getting full 100% coverage for natural and accidental death from the first payment date. That's my goal when I go out in the field and work with my clients. And that's what you should you deserve. Because one company carrier agents that only offer one company, they have a limitation on underwriting. They're not going to give you the best price, nor in many circumstances are your health issues all going to be qualified. So again, it's critical, very critical. You work with somebody who's independent. They shop a variety of carriers and typically offer better underwriting, better pricing, and again, the outcome typically is better for you because that's what you got to remember after the end of the day. It's your money. It's not mine. You have to live with this plan. Your family has to live with this plan. And the fact is, if you're on a fixed income, you got to use every single dollar to the best of your abilities, to the most uh, uh, resourceful of your abilities. And that means making sure you're not paying more than you have to for something you could get elsewhere that's of equivalent quality. And an independent agent is much more likely to be able to do that. So part along this uh, part of along this this process, you probably think, well, you know, I'm, my health's not great or I've been declined. Um, I'm not sure I can qualify for something. And these are concerns everybody who's interested in any kind of final expense whole life policy has. And so what I'd like to talk about here is really that health is not usually something of an obstacle to get qualified for. Now, it does have an effect on what specifically you get qualified for, of course, but it's not something that will just fully say you're incapable of doing that. Even if you've been turned down before, there are companies that will take you at preferred rates, uh, even if you have been turned down by another. That's why it's, it cra it's crazy to think that, but that's how this business is. If you've been in it long enough, if you're an agent yourself, you understand what I mean. You've got to represent multiple carriers because certain carriers take issues that others won't. So the key here, again, is working with the independent agent. Um, I'll, I won't go over that again, but you get the idea. Better price, better underwriting, better value, better for you is the concept. So let's talk about some common conditions an independent agent can get quality coverage for. So I'm going to run through a list of what I usually see and kind of give you some perspective on what's possible. Uh, so first of all, diabetes. A lot of people over 60, a lot of people over 50, a lot of people just in general have diabetes. And they wonder, what kind of coverage can I get, if anything at all? Well, I can tell you this. I have plenty of people who just have a basic type 2 diabetes. They, they got it in adulthood. They just take pills for it. I get them coverage, preferred coverage, even people with insulin use in many circumstances, full preferred coverage, and even with diabetic complications. I've had a lot of people with diabetic neuropathy get coverage, no big deal. You just got to know which companies work and which ones don't. Even those with type 1 diabetes, people who started very early in life, they can get, so they had insulin young, even in, in, into childhood. There are plans out there that don't care. You know, as long as you're generally healthy otherwise, they will get you coverage. And, and I know the companies that will do that. Lung disease. Lots of people out there smoke their whole lives. If you're like my mom, uh, she would tell me when I was a kid as she took a drag on her, uh, you know, a 20th cigarette of the day. She said, Dave, don't ever, ever start this horrible habit. <laughs> and so uh, she since then quit. But, you know, look, it's tough. It's tough to deal with. And. If you have COPD or if you're looking for somebody that has COPD or 
asthma or something like that, you may be thinking, nobody's going to touch you. Well, they will. There are companies that will give first day 100% coverage for lung disease disorders under most circumstances, and that's something I can help you with. Heart disease, surgeries. If you've got a history of this, you may be leery, what can I get? You know, maybe you had a heart attack, a stroke, a stent, bypasses, seizures, aneurysms, pacemakers, stuff like that. Well, I'm here to tell you there are plenty of companies, if you work with the right agency and the right agent, independent agent that is, that as long as it's been a certain amount of time, you can get covered. And that's something I can easily tell you in a matter of a minute or two, what your options are. Some kidney and liver problems can be uh, qualified for. It just depends on the length of time since the original diagnosis and the original treatment. Uh, also continued here, neurological health problems. So lupus, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, all of these, there are options for full first day coverage. Many times, many of these people think they, if they get anything, it's gonna be a two year wait guaranteed issue deal. And, and in most circumstances, that's not the case, so it's great. And mental health issues, people think, oh, I have depression or bipolar or schizophrenia that may count against them. Not the case. You work with an independent agent, there are carriers that will cover that. Now, I'm sure I have, there's other major health issues that I didn't mention. I just wanted to hit the, the broad brush here, you know, the ones that are the most common. But there are other major conditions that, that, that I didn't mention that can be covered. And in some circumstances, again, full disclosure here, I'm not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Sometimes the only options people have are guaranteed acceptance policies where you don't ask health questions and you get coverage only after paying into it for two years. Again, I want to stress here, this is the minority when dealing with me. A lot of the conditions I deal with, I can get full first day coverage. This is not a promise I'm making, though. It's just, it's just being transparent. Uh, and if I can't, I'll tell you that, too. Now, it's still good to get something on the books because, you know, you may live longer than two years, as most of my people do that I get them these policies. So you don't want to be stuck in a situation where you don't have anything, and you would have if you had purchased it earlier. So, But, yeah, I'm just for tr full transparency here. Uh, it's not always you can get full coverage on every single person you ever talk to. So saying otherwise would be a lie. I don't want to lie to you. I like to sleep at night. Okay. So final points here before considering buying coverage, important stuff, generalist stuff that you need to be reminded of. It's always good for anybody. Don't wait any longer, okay? If you've stuck with me to this point in this, in this uh, video here, you're obviously concerned about either getting coverage on yourself, maybe a spouse, or maybe you're the children of parents you want to get covered. And you're obviously really interested and intrigued in doing your due diligence. Once you've found a person to work with, and you trust their capacity to help you out, get something. Don't wait. Many people that we see are world-class procrastinators. Don't be that one. Because all it takes is one health event to totally disqualify you from ever getting full coverage at a preferred rate. Your health is the best as it is today. Don't ever discount it. Age has a way of making things worse, after all. And you can get coverage if you're healthy, and you should. Lock in the prices at a low rate and get your full coverage uh, in force. I have one of the first people I ever wrote a policy on, she had full preferred coverage, called me back a month or two later after the first payment was taken out and it was in force, and she had a heart attack. And she was worried about her coverage. Would she be able to keep it? I said, yeah, still good. You're still alive. You know, everything that happens is at the event of the application written and then after the first premium is taken. She was fine. So, you know, don't discount that. You know, it, 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 we always think bad things happen to other people, but they don't. That's why we get life insurance and final expense whole life insurance to battle against that. So some coverage is better than no coverage. So, you know, I think a lot of us loving parents and especially grandparents, I know a lot of you are, would love to get enormous policies to leave behind your grandkids. Maybe not your kids, because grandkids are a lot better after all, right? And uh, would love to help them out. And, uh, but you can't, because when you see the price, it kind of, you know, your hair falls out. You know, we don't want that. So the point I'm trying to say here is, you know, look at the primary goal you're trying to accomplish. You know, a lot of us want to cover for a burial, and then we want to leave some behind to our spouse. But sometimes our budget just won't allow it. So make sure that you're shopping in the process of shopping, that you find the plan that actually is going to accomplish your primary goal first. You know, sort out your goals. Number one goal always, especially if you don't have savings, is to cover your burial. And then anything left over 
leave behind your kids or spouse or that kind of thing. So just be okay with not getting everything that you want, but getting what you need. Make sure what you buy is easily affordable, okay? I've always said this to every single person I've ever met. There's nothing, nothing worse, all right, as an insurance agent as I am, to sell a policy to somebody and then six months down the road to see somebody who has decided to call in and cancel it because it's too expensive. That's a waste of your money, of which doesn't grow on trees, okay? I would have much rather you not bought it and spend it on something fun than buying it and dropping it in six months because the thing is I know you need this thing. That's why you bought it but you clearly bought too much. And buying too much is just setting a, a landmine later on the road, down the road to blow up and uh, cause you financial problems. And you're still in the same problem as you were when you got it, which is you're not covered. So that's my point, guys. Is I, you know, I work with my clients to make sure it's easily affordable. I've even talked people out of buying too much sometimes uh, just because I just don't want to see them potentially drop this if they're on a very severe fixed income. Certainly want to help people to the extent that they want to be helped, but hey, if it's affordable, it's that much easier to keep. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Oh yeah. And also, of course, ensure your agent is independent. Uh, always ask anybody you deal with, are you an independent agent? And if so, let me see what companies you represent. And you want to tell them, let me see it so they can actually show you the applications and brochures to prove what they're claiming. Okay. What you claim isn't necessarily the truth. So I always want to back up claims with facts. Uh, like, for example, if someone asks me that, I'll throw out all the brochures. I'll show them where I'm appointed with. I'll tell them about the companies. I'll go into detail about everything and all the carriers I represent, enough to give them the assurance that they know that I'm independent and I can shop around to get my client the best value. So some final steps here. Of course, I would be remiss uh, without offering you my uh, services to help you out. Uh, if you're interested in qualifying for final expense whole life insurance with an independent agent, then I implore you to give me a ring. As you saw down in the lower left-hand corner, the number to call me is 888-626-0439. And you can also visit my website at buylifeinsuranceforburial.com for a free quote. I am a very low-key, relaxed agent. I only want to help you if you want to be helped. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I really am concerned and care about my clients and making sure they get the best price and the best value. And what we would do if you decide to contact me is I'll ask you some health questions, figure out exactly where things stand, show you a couple prices within the budget that you're comfortable with, and then you decide if it makes sense for you or not. Even if you just want to quote and think about it, that's fine too. I'm not a high pressure guy. I never have been. It's really a bad thing to be in this business. You need to be low key and be uh, a, a, have a servant's heart to help people out. So again, if you'd like a free quote, you want to find out more about what you can qualify for, I, in, in most states, uh, all I can say is just give me a call and I'll run a quote for you and let you know if I can help you. If I can, I can refer you out to somebody else. My number again is 888-626-0439, a dial ex extension 2 or 1. It all goes to me. And speak to me or my team live. And if you like anything in this video, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, anything at all, feel free to leave a comment at the bottom of this YouTube video below, or if you're watching this on my website, you're welcome to leave a comment. I am uh, committed to helping you out with anything that you have regarding questions or concerns. And again, my name is Dave Duford. I'm the owner and operator of Final Expense, excuse me, by Life Insurance for Burial.com. And uh, look forward to speaking with you if you're looking to get peace of mind knowing that you have coverage on the books to protect your loved ones. Take care and thanks for watching.